event, we had Hollywood Hulk Hogan going up against the Giant. The Giant had been one of the biggest heels in WCW, a guy that nobody could beat, including Hulk Hogan himself. But because of the NWO, he had a phantom, just babyface turn. People had to cheer him because you couldn't have two heels going at it for the championship. As long as Jimmy Hart, Jimmy Hart, one of the biggest heel referees who had turned on Hulk Hogan, immediately just became a miraculous babyface. And in this match, um, Hogan, you know, was able to control the Giant around, but because the Giant is so big, you know, the Giant uh, was looking like he was going to win this match. And, uh, you know, Hollywood pulled all of his tricks uh, that he could, but it was basically a very, very bad run-in by the Outsiders. First came Scott Hall, who, they both came to the ring by themselves, yet for some reason they did not go into the ring at the same time. They had to act like they were sneaking around the referee, Hall tried to come in and come off the top roach, which was caught by the Giant for a uh, big splash. Nash got caught sneaking in the back door. And after that, Hollywood just planted the belt right into the Giant's face. And it was 1-2-3, and the NWO was off. They had had the biggest prize in the WCW. And um, history was made. I mean, that was the night they spray-painted NWO on the World Heavyweight Championship. I don't know who planned it, but they, I don't think they knew it was going to be as gimmick, as big as a, of a gimmick as it was. It's a pretty legendary thing right there. This doesn't look as good as the real one, but um, I don't know. And after the match as well, because this was held on uh, Hulk Hogan's birthday. Actually, it was held on the day before Hulk Hogan's birthday. But they gimmicked it up. The booty man, Brutus the Barber Beefcake himself. Uh, put on an NWO t-shirt, brought down a big old birthday cake for Hulk Hogan, and tried to celebrate with the NWO. Basically, uh, Hogan said they weren't going to miss business with friendship. He said that the uh, that Brutus was his best friend, and he said that he would never cross him, but he had to be whispered into Hall and Nash's uh, in the ear, and just they just took him, and they just went, bam. This is what they should have done with the NWO. They should have kept it as these three guys, Hogan, Hall, and Nash. You know, before long, uh, they had a thing where the Nasty Boys tried to join, and everybody knows why that was, the same reason as the Booty Man here. Uh, but basically, um, you know, the, they, they, tried, they kicked the Nasty Boys out as fast as they got them in. They just used them to try and take down the, uh, uh, the tag team champions. Uh, but then, after that, WCW felt bad for the, I mean, the, well, yeah. The, the people felt bad for the WCW guys not getting any victories, so they started bringing in guys like Big Bubba Robert Rogers, Mr. Wall Street, um, Virgil, guys that could go on TV shows and take the falls on Saturday night's main events, and well, whatever the hell that, that show was called, WCW Nitros, and they watered down the NWO to the point of, you know, just, eh, who really cares? There are good matches on this show, Rey Mysterio versus Ultimo Dragon, Sonny Yono is out there, the man who invented the selfie himself. Chris Benoit versus Dean Malenko. Harlem Heat wrestling the Skiner Brothers for the WCW World Tag Team Championships. Um, the Steiner Brothers are even wearing gear, much like their WWF run, uh, with like the sort of spray painted sort of colors on there. I thought it was something that they would have worn uh, in WWF when they were there at the time. But the only thing is, it's hard to take in because the show starts outside in the middle of a field with all these bikers around it. Um, it's just not well set. Like, when you're watching it into an arena, you can look into the crowd, but the crowd ends into darkness, pretty much. You, you can't see all the way to the back of the arena, but you can see the bikers all the way into the back of the field, which are flashing the camera, uh, which are revving up their engines, making just excessive noise on the outside, on their motorcycles. It's just a weird setting of a pay-per-view. And if, if I can keep watching this, uh, run of uh, WCW NWO pay-per-views. Uh, I guess I will have to watch another one, but I'm not really looking forward to it. This is not one that I would tell you to watch unless you want to sit down and watch the history of the NWO, where you see Hogan beat the Giant and take on the NWO title.